Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Todd the Kayak Warrior. I'm gonna do a little something different today. So in one of my previous videos, uh, I'll put a link up there. You'll see where I lost my rod and reel, my favorite sheep's head rig overboard. And just my stupidity, um, not paying attention. So I have a replacement. I have a new reel, new rod, and I'm going to actually put them together so I can show you how I set up my sheep's head rig with my reel, my rod, my line, my leader, and actual hooks that I use. Well, the actual one hook that I use. I'm just going to set it up. All right. So if this is your first time to the channel, do me a favor, subscribe and also share my channel so that way others can see the type of content I'm putting out. And while you're there, go ahead and like this video. You're gonna like it. All right, let's dive right in. So what I lost was a Pin Battle 2 3000 on an Ugly Stick Inshore Elite um, six foot six um, medium heavy rod. So that's what I, I like. I like the shorter rod for sheep's head fishing, especially when you're underneath of docks or uh, underneath of bridges where things can get a little tight. I like a shorter rod and reel. So what I've done to replace that, and I'm gonna do each one separately. So I'm gonna start with the reel. What I've purchased is the Pin Battle 3. Uh, this is a new one that came out last year. And it's also a 3000 series. It's very similar to the Pin Battle 2. The one distinct difference is, if you'll notice here, it has the CNC gear with it on the inside of it. And that makes it, what it all boils down to, the CNC is um, uh, machine uh, cut bearings and metal parts on the inside, and it makes it a little bit smoother. And so I've messed around with it and it actually feels a little bit smoother than my Pin Battle 2. And I have another 3000. Uh, I just didn't want to take it off my rod and reel. I didn't want to bring it in here. Uh, but it is a little bit smoother. The weight is still about the same. It's about 11.6 uh, ounces. So some are going to ask me, why don't you just go with a Daiwa or uh, a Shimano? Here's a couple reasons why I chose the Pin Battle. One, the name. Pin has been around for decades. It's a very good company. Uh, they make very good quality fishing equipment. So the downside, yes, this is a little bit heavier than most. Uh, I like the 3000 size. Uh, that's my favorite reel size for inshore fishing just because it's pretty versatile. It has the same uh, setup as a 2500, but the uh, line capacity is a little bit more. So you can get about 50 more yards of braid on here. And if I'm fishing and I'm, you know, lose some line while I'm out fishing, cause you're gonna do that every once in a while, you have to break off or, or something like that. But if I get a big run on a big redfish, I still have enough line to be able to fight that fish. Um, so the other thing is this 6.2 to one gear ratio. So it's not super fast, but it's fast enough to catch up with those fish that make those big runs. If you're uh, ever fish redfish and they make that run and they're coming at you in your kayak and you have to pick up a lot of line, this will still do it, all right? So that's why I chose um, this particular reel. And what I have on here, I have Power Pro Super 8 Slick version two on here. And I like the blue, cause I like to be able to see my line. So if I'm underneath docks and it gets a little bit darker, I, that blue um, uh, line is able to be able to be seen by me and detected you know, if I have, if, if I'm freelining or if I just cast it down and all of a sudden my line stops, I can see those quick jerks uh, with that blue line. 
So this is what I like to use. Like I said, the Power Pro Slick 2, and it's a 15 pound braid. So for my leader, what I'm actually gonna use, I'm using uh, Yozuri uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Now, once again, everybody has their own uh, personal preferences. I like fluorocarbon for my, um, my line. It has a little less stretch um, than mono does. They're both abrasion resistant. Some have done tests, uh, either Salt Strong or my buddy uh, Rad Reeling Fishing, you can check him out, uh, where they've done tests on you know, mono and braid, or uh, mono and floral. It's, it's your own preference. Uh, I like the fluorocarbon, that's just my preference. And I like 15 pound braids. Some people go down to 10 pound braid. But when I'm fishing this heavy stuff uh, with sheep's head, because you just don't know, I might catch a sheep's head one minute, catch a big drum the next minute, and a big redfish the next, because uh, they all eat the same thing. So I just, this is just what I prefer. And then as far as my rod, I have, um, if you heard me say I had an inshore, um, an ugly stick inshore elite six foot six, did something a little bit different. I uh, followed my buddy um, Faith in Fishing and he ordered uh, a rod and reel. I'm gonna put the description to the company below, but I ordered the same exact one that he did. Uh, just because it's the same exact size I was looking for, and it was interesting that the day that I lost mine uh, was the day that he put his video out and where I saw immediately and ordered this, this rod and reel, or this reel, this rod. So it is a six foot, toadfish, I'm sorry, a five foot 11 uh, toadfish rod. Pretty well packaged. This is not an unboxing, but I just wanted to do it and set everything up together. So what I have here is a five foot 11 medium extra fast tip uh, from Toadfish. So I wanted, I've, I've been checking out Toadfish's products for a while and the first person I saw was um, Angling with Brent. Uh, I watch his videos all the time. I'm gonna put a link to his as well down, down below. The guy is pretty amazing. So if you haven't seen his videos, check him out. But I wanted a toadfish for a couple of different reasons. One, this is specifically for sheep's head fishing. The name of it is the convict. So that's number one. The guys at Toadfish took a lot of time and did a lot of surveying and designed this thing specifically for sheep's head fishing. And so it can handle 10 to 30 pound braid and a quarter ounce up to an ounce is what it's really designed for the medium. So like I said, the reason why I really like this is because uh, they are number one, American based. I love supporting American based companies. Uh, that's just who I am because I'm an American. Number two, they put a lot of thought in this to design this specifically for sheep's head fishing. From the weight of it, it is really light. The length of it being five foot 11, it has that extra fast tip to be able to detect those subtle bites that you, any sheep's head fisherman knows that sometimes you don't even know that you have a, a fish on. They can just go bite real quick and then let go and they're just, they're gone. So um, everything about this thing is specific for sheep's head fishing. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and 
uh, pair this thing on here and uh, finish setting it up. So the other thing that is good, I like about most saltwater reels is it has the hook keeper here. And that's good. So that way you don't have to put your hook in your guide and mess your guides up. All right. So all I do, all you do here is just screw this out. And so let me back up with the rod. So since I'm right-handed, I like to reel with my left hand. All right. So this is a right-handed rod or reel. Since I have my reel on the left hand, my power is in my right hand. I'm going to reel with my opposite hand. If I was left-handed, I would normally have the rod in my left hand and I'm going to reel with my right. And that's the other thing about the pin. Most of the pin series, they have ambidextrous um, ways that you can uh, add the reel. So I could just unscrew this, put it on here if I wanted to, and I could fish the opposite way. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and match this up in here. I'm going to seat it. I have to screw it out just a little bit more. So now that I have it seated in, I'm just going to screw it down. And what you want to do, you don't want to get it super tight, but you want it tight enough to where it's not going to come off and that there's no rattling whatsoever. All right. So now that I have that nice and hand tight, I don't hear any rattling. It's, it fits pretty well. The, the combo isn't um, super light, just because I told you that this pin, uh, Battle 3, uh, 3000, it's a little bit heavy. It's 11 ounces, a little over 11 ounces, but the body is very uh, sturdy. It's a solid metal piece. Um, the only thing that's uh, aluminum, it has some aluminum parts in the inside, but that is to, to make it a little bit lighter. The older battles, everything was metal. So now it's a little bit better. It's very corrosive resistant. That's the other thing about, I like about this pin is, you know, this battle series and just like the pin pursuit, pin conflict, they are the spin fisher as well. They're saltwater oriented. Meaning that even if I drop this in salt water, I could just rinse it off. I'm not gonna have any issues with it. So, uh, and every pen that I've had is very durable as well. So, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and take my line here, activate my bail, and I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the line through my guides. See how sensitive that tip is? Man, that is nice. That's the extra fast tip. I'm gonna use an FG knot to actually uh, tie my knot. I'm gonna take it up a little bit more because I'm sitting down here. There's all kinds of knots you can tie. Um, uh, I prefer the FG knot. Um, I've had a lot of success with it and it's, actually really easy uh, and pretty quick to tie as well so what I normally do I get about a complete arm's length worth of uh, fluorocarbon and then once I cut it off I take it and I stretch it because it's on here, fluorocarbon doesn't have a lot of memory like mono does, but I want to stretch it out just because it gets that elasticity out and you see how much straighter it is. Just do that real quick. Little tip that I learned. So what I do for the FG knot, I take my rod and I set it off to the side and now I have it up against my leg. So if I pull it, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna come over. But what I do, I wrap this around my pinky about five or six times. So that way I have a little bit of control 
on the knot and it's not going to slip off. So then what I do now, I take about maybe eight, nine inches and I start my knot. I'm not going to show you how to do the knot. I'm going to let you see me, you know, do the knot in its entirety. But what I'm doing now, I'm just going around. And so, you know, the, the biggest thing with the FG knot is having tension. So when I tie this around my finger, now I have tension on my line. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to go back and forth. And I'm using my fingers to help keep the um, the line uh, nice and tight. Now I have a nice small FG knot, really nice and fine, because that will go through my guides really easy. So this is a 3/8 ounce salt donkey jig. Um, I've talked about my buddy Jackson a couple times. Uh, this dude, he's, he's pretty cool. He's up in North Carolina. Uh, he asked me to try these things out. I did, and I've just, I keep buying them because I like these. I use bottom sweeper jigs as well, but Jackson can make all different colors. So this one here is almost like a root beer. This one, uh, and he makes a, I can't remember what, the name of it is, but it's a green one. Uh, it's like light green and white. Those, these two are my best colors that I have for sheep's head. So uh, I absolutely love them. So I recommend them. I'm gonna have them down in the description. Um, but uh, like I said, this is a salt donkey jig. I tie a loop knot. Jackson, I know. You said not to use loop knots. I like new loop knots on your salt donkey jig. So I'm actually gonna tie a loop knot. So what I do, I just tie, he's gonna probably call me and tell me don't ever use, a, use that. So what I just do is just overhand and now I have like a little loop there. I'm going to take this, the running end, put it through the eye of the hook. I probably have too much. You don't need to have this much. But now that I have um, this on here, I'm just going to take my running end, go through the loop that I just created, and I'm going to pull it down. So now I have the loop down close to um, the knot itself or down to the eye. And I'm just going to loop this around about five to seven times. And all, all this is really doing is just giving you a little bit of uh, extra uh, tension there. So now that I have that there, I'm gonna take my running ear and I'm gonna go back down through the loop that I created in the original. So now that that's through there, all I have to do is pull this down. I'm gonna wet this real quick and I'm gonna pull this down until it gets, starts getting tight. And then I'm going to pull up and now it's nice and tight. So that is a bigger loop knot than what I normally do, but as long as it's not your loop doesn't interfere with your hook, it'll be fine. Because what that's going to do is just going to give this thing freedom to, to move around. Uh, and the reason why Jackson told me not to have a loop knot, he said you can detect the bite a little bit better, but I have found down here in Florida, the this loop knot, I can get it out of places where I'm stuck a little bit more. So I save more of my uh, jigs when I'm, I feel I'm stuck. It gives me a chance to pull out uh, of, you know, 
underneath the barnacles or whatever else I'm, I'm hooked on uh, a little bit better. So that's kind of what I do. That's my loop knot. And then once I'm done, I just tie off, I just cut off the tagging as tight as I can. And that's it. Now I have a nice strong knot tied onto an FG on the 15 pound braid. And I am rocking. That's how I set up my sheep's head rig. Uh, nine times out of 10. The only thing that'll be different sometimes, I'll have another one, another rig with just uh, a one, a number one owner hook uh, that I may freeline with either free line or put a split shot but that's it guys uh, this is my sheep's head rig that I am set and ready to go out with I can't wait so I'm gonna head out uh, in a couple of days and try to hook me a couple of convicts on this thing and hopefully in the next video uh, you'll be able to see me use my new sheep's head rig and hopefully pull some some sheep at sheep's head up out of some structure. All right, guys. So thanks again for watching, for hanging with me while I'm putting this thing together. Do me a favor, like the video, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. It really helps me out. And then also share my channel so that way others can see the type of content I'm putting out. All right, guys. Remember, God loves you. God bless you. May he keep you. Peace.